Hi everyone and welcome back to Power Electronics Lectures. Today we will talk about the back boost converter design. Let's recall first the back converter and the boost converter and see what are the differences if we compare these two converters with the back boost converter. This is the circuit for the back converter and of course here we will talk about the traditional back and boost converters and this is the back boost converter. For the back converter, we said when the switch is conducting, the current will be flowing in this direction. And when the switch is uh, off or open circuit, then the current will be flowing in this direction. And we said uh, because we have uh, two currents at the output, one current at the input, so we expect that uh, the voltage on the output is less than the voltage on the input. And that's why we call it a back converter or step down converter. If you look at the boost converter, similarly, when the switch is conducting, so the current will be flowing in this direction. And uh, when the switch is uh, off or open circuit, then the current that was installed inside the inductor will force the diode to be on and the current then will be flowing in this direction. And here we will find the opposite happens in the boost converter. We have two currents at the input and one current at the output. So that's why we expect that uh, the output voltage should be uh, larger than or greater than uh, the input voltage because the current on the output is less than the current on the input. Now for the back boost converter, when the switch, when the active switch is conducting, so uh, the current will be flowing in this direction. And when the switch is off or open circuit, so the current that was installed inside the inductor will keep flowing. Now this uh, switch is off, so the current will be flowing in this direction. So if you focus here and concentrate on the behavior of the current on the input or the output, you will find that we have only one current at the input side and one current at the output side. So there is no privilege for the current to be higher or lower, like significantly, on both input and the output. So we can simply say that uh, this might be the reason why this buck boost converter can either increase or decrease uh, the voltage on the output uh, if we just change uh, the duty cycle. So this buck boost converter can do two jobs, which is either stepping up the voltage or stepping down the voltage. Now again, if you look at uh, the current on the the current on the back boost converter, you'll find that this current, I prefer to call it infinity current. Why? Because it looks like infinity. If you come back to this uh, circuit again, when the switch is on, the current will be flowing in this direction. When the switch is off, the current will be flowing in this direction. So uh, we can say that this current is flowing inside uh, this converter in this way keeping moving in this way on and off on and off and this looks like the sign of uh, infinity so it's uh, maybe it's interesting thing to call this back boost converter infinity so we'll never forget the behavior of the current inside uh, this converter let's go now for some in-depth analysis for this uh, back boost converter don't forget that uh, the input current for this converter is uh, discontinuous and in DC-DC converter, this is not preferable because we have at some stage to add maybe storage device at the input to make smooth transition for the energy. Coming back to the back boost converter circuit. Um, now here, let's suppose that uh, the switch is on during this time from zero to delta TS and off from uh, delta TS to TS. Let's change today uh, the duration for the on and off time. So we make it maybe shorter for the on time, greater for the off time. And now the switch is on and from here to here, the switch is off. Now when the switch is, is on, so we said that uh, the current will be flowing in this direction and uh, the current inside uh, the inductor will be developing, be increasing. And if we try to calculate the slope, for this current, you will find that the slope uh, for this current is equal to how much? V input over L, right? Because we said that delta I over delta T times L is the voltage uh, across the inductor. 
So easily the cross the voltage across the inductor in this case is equal to V input and delta I over delta T is equal to how much? V input over L. Now similarly when the uh, when the switch is off, so the current uh, as we said uh, for the infinity converter will go from this inductor and directly will be will be directed in this direction. The current inside the inductor will be decreasing, but now will be decreasing slowly. Of course, here we don't have the same slope because both on time and off time are not same, but the change of the current will be same. So the ripple here will be same in order to keep um, balance operation. If you try to find the slope in this case, you will find that the voltage across this uh, inductor is equal to how much? Plus minus VL. It will be, of course, how much? Minus V out. So this will be minus V out over L. Now, since the current is flowing in the opposite direction on the load side, so of course here the voltage will be plus negative, will be reversed, which is in contrary uh, to what we see in the back uh, converter or the boost converter. By the way, uh, this will not make any difference. What if the, if the output voltage is reversed? No problem, we just reverse the wires and that's fine. So we cannot say that this is one of the disadvantages for the back boost converter. No problems. Now we agreed that uh, the change of the current, the energy that is stored inside the inductor must be the same as uh, the energy that is leaving the inductor or the change of the current uh, when the switch is conducting must be exactly same as uh, the rate, uh, the change of the current when the uh, switch is off during on time and this is during off time. Be careful here, we cannot say that these two areas are same. These two triangle are not same but the change of the current from here to here the ripple must be same in order to keep steady state operation so we can simply say that this slope v input over l times delta ts the time period from here to here delta ts is equal to minus minus v out over l times 1 minus delta times ts so here we can go for uh, simplifying this so we can say that delta v input is equal to v output minus delta v output and this is 1 minus delta times v output so the relation between the input and the output in this case is equal to how much delta over 1 minus delta if you look at this you will find that v out and v, uh, v out can be larger or smaller than v in depending on the value of the duty cycle so if the duty cycle is equal to 0.5 for example so 0.5 over 0.5 is equal to 1 so the input voltage will be equal to the output voltage if the duty cycle is less than uh, 0.5 so the output voltage will be less than the input voltage so it will be a buck converter and if the output if the duty cycle is larger than 0.5 so this will be acting as a boost converter so this is the buck boost uh, converter uh, relation between the input and the output voltage from this slope we can find the inductor current triple so the inductor current triple is equal to delta i l this slope which is v input over l times the duration delta times ts and from this equation we can say that the inductor value will be uh, delta times v input over the switching frequency times the ripple the current ripple and this is how how we can uh, design uh, the value for the inductor at specific ripple at specific input voltage switching frequency and the duty cycle all these all these values affect the selection of the uh, inductor value now let's try to find the inductor current the average inductor current we assume that uh, there is no losses uh, within this converter because the input uh, voltage is dc only because the input voltage is dc we can say that the power on the input is equal to the input dc times uh, the input uh, current and we can say that the input power is equal to how much the input current times the input voltage 
If you look at the input current here, you'll find that the input current is zero when the switch is off, and the input current will be equal to the inductor current when the switch is conducting. So the average source current uh, is related to the average uh, inductor current by the following relation. We can say that uh, the input current is equal to delta times I L. So we can take this current, throw it to dustbin, and replace it with the delta times I L times V input. And also we can replace the output voltage from the equation that we know. We know that V out over V in is equal to delta over one minus delta. So V out is equal to delta times V in over one minus delta. So we can do this uh, arrangement. So here V input times delta I L is equal to delta squared times V input squared over one minus delta squared times R. This square will go with this V input. So the input, so the inductor current, the average inductor current is equal to delta times V input over one minus delta squared times R. So this is the average inductor current. To find the maximum and the minimum for the ripple, we said that the maximum is equal to uh, IL plus delta IL over two, and the minimum is how much? IL minus delta IL over two. So IL maximum and minimum is equal to IL, which is delta V input over one minus delta squared times R plus or minus delta IL over two. Delta IL is how much? V input over L times delta TS and all of these over two. So this is the maximum and uh, the minimum value for the inductor current. In order to make sure that our uh, inductor is operating in the continuous conduction mode, so uh, this minimum must be larger than zero. Now, if we have no load on the output, so we cannot say that uh, there is current inside the inductor, we will have only ripple inside the inductor. Now, taking this equation and uh, make sure that uh, this equation, the minus one is larger than zero, you'll find that delta V input over one minus delta squared times R, this must be larger than this term, which is one over two times V input over L times delta TS. This can be here as a switching frequency, all these can go here. So we can say that L times the switching frequency, the minimum value for this term must be larger than one minus delta squared because this will go with this. And here we find that R over two. If the switching frequency is high, we can use smaller inductor. Or if the inductor is large, we can use a smaller switching frequency in order to keep the converter working in the continuous conduction mode. Because again, the ripple will be smaller if we use high switching frequency or high inductor. The minimum inductance here is equal to how much? We just put this switching frequency here. So the minimum value for the inductor is equal to one minus delta squared times R over two times the switching frequency. And this is the minimum inductance that can keep our infinity converter working in the continuous conduction mode. How about the ripple uh, the, on the capacitor side on the output voltage? So let's go now and try to find the capacitor voltage ripple. For the capacitor, we said that here we have a diode conducting in this way, and here we have inductor. When the switch is uh, conducting, so we say that uh, the current is flowing in this direction and this diode will be off. So we have no current when the switch is conducting. The current will be zero. So if we try to draw the current in the diode side, you will find that ID is equal to zero from zero to delta TS. And at this point, you'll find that the current uh, that is flowing in the capacitor is equal to the current that's flowing in the load. Because here, if you look at the current here, you will find that um, the current will be flowing in this direction if the diode is conducting. And if the diode is off, so the current will be flowing in this direction. So we can say that the current on the capacitor 
is equal to minus V out over R. And this is IC. If you want to continue when the switching is off and the diode is conducting, so uh, the current on the diode will be exactly the same as uh, the current on the inductor. So this will be something like this. So this will be exactly as the current in the inductor IL. The current on the capacitor will take this shape. And we agreed that, um, that this area, delta Q, must be exactly the same as this area in order to make sure that um, we are operating in the steady state operation. Now IC of course is equal to ID minus IR, but ID is equal to IL. Now we can use this information here to say that delta Q is equal to V out over R times delta TS and delta Q is equal to delta V out over R times the switching frequency and we know that Q is equal to C times V and this is V out in this case and delta Q then is equal to C times delta V out so we can use this relation to divide this by C and say that this is the ripple on the output voltage so delta V out in this case is equal to delta times V out, the duty cycle times V out over R C times the switching frequency. From this, we can say that delta V out over V out is equal to the duty cycle over R C times the switching frequency. And from this equation, we can say that the value of the capacitor for this converter must be equal to delta over R times the switching frequency times delta V out over V out, the ripple. And we can use this uh, equation to find the value of the capacitor in the buck boost converter. Now there are many forms uh, for buck boost converter. Uh, of course, here we are talking only about uh, the traditional buck boost converter. You will find that uh, there are many uh, configurations that can give us um, the delta over one minus delta a relation between the input and the output voltage and each one of these configurations has its disadvantages and advantages for example if you talk about the chuck converter chuck converter is considered as a buck boost converter but it has a different configuration and it uses the capacitors to store the energy for example i hope that you enjoyed this lecture if you have any question or if you have any comment, I'll be happy to hear from you and I'll see you next time.